Hello, mech fans. This is Duncan Fisher. Hold on firmly to your mana potions, fireballs, and familiars, because you are tuning in to your regularly scheduled episode of the First Circuit Podcast. Hello and welcome everyone to the First Circuit Podcast, episode number 137. We have our usual trio of guests, uh, guests here? Yes, guests. We're all guests to our guests. podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me, Peter. We also have old Bob. Hello. And Ian. Hi. And today's subjects will be covering the uh, roadmap, the events and sales, and a little bit of streamer drama. So let's get right into it with the roadmap. We have gotten a roadmap for Micro Online, which is something that has been talked about forever, and it's finally out in writing. And boy, oh boy, is it difficult to read. I mean, yeah, that's it... actually the first thing we talk about. Boy, is this a terrible experience to read. <laughs> I mean, it's basically their own personal checklist given to everyone <laughs> to read yeah. over. So, to quickly just show you, this is the whole roadmap. It's basically just a checklist of things they want to do. Uh, they split it up in uh, four quarters, as they've already talked about, with the like easier stuff first and then the more interesting things later on. Sorry, I forget and back of my chair. <laughs> so... It's based on the uh, community feedback that has been given on the past few posts, and I don't know, do we just want to dive into the first topic and sure. see what they yeah. have planned? Well, well, like generally, um, generally though, uh, Darren he um, he asked everyone saying, "Hey, you know, what do you guys want?" And so everyone chimed in from from emails to uh, Twitter posts and everything else, and he collected all the different things. And this is them pretty much responding on, "Okay, this is what you wanted. Here's how we're gonna do it, and here's kind of like the quarters." Eh, the quarter is what we're going to do it and so it it in my opinion it's hard to read don't get me wrong but at least you're doing something and that's what i like you know at least you're kind of working on the game uh, so like um one example just very from the top uh change cadet starting tier mm -hmm. to five that has already been implemented isn't it but uh things like increase cadet bo uh, cadet bonus has yeah. that been implemented i haven't I made a new I... a new account so i can't even say it is. Because, I believe when they say done, they mean they have it done on their site, and they're just waiting for the actual patch to push oh, it out. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, well, well, that's just the thing that uh, the very first item is already um, live out in the wild. Yeah. The cadet starting bonus, uh, starting tier to five, isn't it? So, yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so done is a little bit confusing, and I have to remember which ones they've <laughs> done and which ones they've done done. done. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once yeah. again, I wish their web page could include something like a spreadsheet where they could just color mark it. That would have been fine. Yeah, you know, green, in some would... ways with a roadmap as well, it's usually you should sort of just tell people what to look forward to rather than what's already is done. Though I think. For the most part, it's just that cadet starting bonus. There aren't many things they have actually implemented. It's just a little bit confusing when the first item you read yeah. is done and the second is isn't done, done. but it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a little side note or something like that, or put done done, you know, basically, <laughs> or something. That'd be kind of funny. Done 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 done. Nice. Uh, yeah, the lower the volume on the intro of the movies. Thank God, that is just um, that's that if they put that in soon it'll just like make life improvements so well so nice um yeah so one thing to think a little bit about as you can see um yeah there's, there's ones they've already implemented they figured out there is there's one listed for february under social which is update the mw5 discord to make warrior online discord um because they are intending to patch you know at least once every month or so if they have anything it will go into the game if yeah. it's ready to go um so a lot of these things you know if you say it's slated it's slated for march that's just a rough estimate because there's a lot of things that could be done by march but they could be done earlier and could arrive a bit sooner or they could uh take a bit longer you never know that's always the the fun of development so uh in some ways it, it's nice getting all the information and some other ways it adds a lot of clutter and you know is a little you know you, you take it with a pinch of salt you should yeah yeah um, can you, can you go up for a second? 
Uh, I think there was yeah. uh, so all of the preamble out of the way. Yeah, just want to go through and yeah, I'm curious about the uh, new player Let's tutorial like videos. A quick fire, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, official and community. I mean, do they expect us to make the videos or, or what's going on with that? You know, based, I'm going to say like, hey, can you guys both. make videos? So we only have this, the, you know, we only have the lines here. It doesn't go yeah. into the details and uh, at least things that haven't actually been implemented yet that aren't mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Obviously. Done, done. Um, done, done, not done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or just one done, not double done. Um, okay. uh, things that have no dones whatsoever, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're subject to change. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right, Sabi. Though, uh, for I believe for player tutorials, uh, they're going to talk about in one of the dev updates, I believe, mm -hmm. um, that they are looking to reach out to the community and get some of their okay. help creating those videos. It also states official, so maybe they're doing some of their own, which would be cool. Yeah. yeah um, okay. I I think if you're a content creator for Micro Online, just shoot down an email and be like, hey, I I want to help with the videos. Tell There's a lot of good do. guys to do some stuff. Too, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Update trial mix and loadouts. Uh, yeah, appropriate consultation. We're gonna see what happens there. That's kind of weird. About the volume, um, dynamic uh, time of day and maps. We've already talked about that one. Bolt on stay attached. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's a priority. No, actually, oh, yeah. it's it's it it will help them actually sell the bolt ons because I know like I'm not spending yeah, seven hundred fifty for freaking horns. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a whale. I don't have the mindset of value. <laughs> <laughs> weapon changes uh, past one. Yeah, weapon changes. This is going to be interesting. Um, we don't know anything about how they're going to approach weapon changes. Um, obviously, there are the huge community collected uh, documents where there are suggestions on how to completely overhaul weapon balances. Mm -hmm. I would expect this to be something on a much smaller scale like gathering feedback um like these are the top five weapons that need to be adjusted and then adjusting them and seeing how it pans out but again we don't know anything yet yeah yeah, yeah. i um i hope they will finally give us some data regarding weapon usages and all that kind of stuff because the bombardier when we had him on said oh yeah we've got information on this kind of stuff we we know what is really working well in the game and what isn't so mm -hmm. Let the, you know, share that information with the community and therefore we can make better decisions on how the game should be balanced. For the most part, uh, the game is fairly well balanced or at least it's um, uh, it, there's nothing too atrocious. Um, well, yep. Most weapon systems can sort of make, make their mark on the game. The only sort of exceptions in my head are a little bit of things like you don't really see much of ISPPCs unless it's only on like the awesome or maybe a couple of mechs. Not even the awesome, um, man. A lot of people don't use those like anymore. Just the, yeah, um, there's heavy yeah. heavy PPC grasshopper sometimes as well. There, yeah. there are exceptions. It's just it's usually more of an exception than a rule. Whereas you can much more easily get away with medium pulse lasers, like medium pulse lasers, just all the time within the sphere energy boats. But uh, medium lasers a bit following up, large lasers a bit following up. That large pulse lasers, I do not see them very much nowadays either. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, that's why at least I'm interested in the stats to see how well people perform. Because I'm like, oh, I don't really see large pulse lasers, but who knows? In lower tiers, they might be awesome. Or in higher tiers, who knows? Mm. Yeah, or at least used a lot. Because, um, like, PPCs, I agree um, to an extent, but I have seen a lot of awesomes lately. Yeah. And it's difficult for me to be like, this is, like, actually, they're being used a lot, or it's just me noticing them a whole lot because I've been paying attention to awesomes for a different reason. Because why they're awesome? Is that why? Absolutely. Okay, there you go. I mean, there's uh, been a bunch of yeah. awesomes lately for other reasons, but they're the missile boating awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. Uh, we'll get to the missile yeah. story later yeah. on. Yeah. I, I'm um, just saying that obviously the weapon system should be an option for much more in a sphere mechs than just the awesome or mechs that have really quirk towards it. It feels a little sad that it isn't available. It isn't such a viable option. But you don't want to go crazy with PPCs either because of their pinpoint damage. And you, you get in, yeah. into issues with Gorse PPC and all that. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, Seabill recruitment cost for units. I never understood that one. Um, well, we they talk about the Discord, regular death relocks. Hmm? Well, the, with this, um, like during Faction Play a long time ago, a couple of years ago, uh, they were having problems with like huge ass groups. 
being inside the uh, um, like they have a hundred man uh, group, and so they wanted to kind of curtail that. For what I understand, curtail that so that you have to pay a lot of money per guy after like the first twelve or something like that. And and I think that's what that was, but I could be wrong on that one though. So that was when like faction yeah, warfare, was when... you could have huge groups yeah. owning large portions of the map, which yeah. uh, I'm not sure is really so much a thing nowadays. No, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, so, not really big. Yeah, so the, the reasons have long since passed, so why is it still in the game? Yeah, totally makes sense to remove it. Helps yeah. people match make with each other and with their friends. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. New player packs for both the Web Store and Steam. New player bundle deals. Oh, new bundle deals. Hell yes, we've talked about this. Yeah. Important. Uh, events and freebies. That's something I was surprised by. Monthly mission for free mech. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. I wouldn't have expected something like this, but hell yeah, I'm all for it. And then obviously sales, loot bags, events, dailies, the whole story we've been getting so far. Yeah, I'm very surprised with the fruit mech because um, that's a lot of value if you give away a mech bay in some ways like the mech bay. Uh, but it also means free to play is so much more easy to pull off because yeah. you, your, mech, your total number of mechs is expanding once per month. Much at more least. reliable and consistent. Yeah, at least. Yeah. It you know, but this company though, like PGI, has given out you know, you know, MC like candy, you know, like MC like candy, or you know, C bills like candy. So, I mean, like for them to give out a free mech per month, it's not that big of a stretch to go ahead and do that. And I mean, the mechs aren't gonna be like the Hellbringer, uh, the Laser Boat Hellbringer, or like something major. You know, it's just gonna be like, hey, you got a locust. Here you go, have fun. You know, type thing. At least what I'm thinking. You know, it's not gonna be. They're thing probably. Yeah, like with the free mechs we got at the end of the year, it's the less popular variants. Yeah, yeah. They want to saturate the game with the more, uh, for some reason. Though really, you should just saturate everyone with with that mech and, and try and actually make it viable. <laughs> because <laughs> you might just have a whole bunch of people selling those mechs. Yeah. Uh, I am very really curious to see what they finally implement. Because it, 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 even in my head, it's kind of hard to uh, give out 12 mechs a year and do that year after year after year and always keep it fresh and variable. Mm -hmm. True, true. Yeah. I'm also going to be looking forward to a which mech they give away and maybe more importantly, what the requirements are to get them. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I don't know, like, I I don't need any new mechs, but I'm a collector. So uh, this has very much potential to get me to act more actively play the game in the future. Yeah. And yeah, the funny thing, by the way, this free mech thing is actually mentioned as a, something to be implemented in March. Like, they're actually more uh, sure on it than the one above, which is like, things like dailies and weeklies. We just don't have that in the game, so to speak. At least, you know, what we normally associate from other games and dailies and weeklies that it's uh, particular to each player. We have grand events that everybody takes part in weekly, but uh, uh, this seems to imply, you know, a much more personalized system, a much more dynamic system. I hope for, they do that. Yeah. Um, incentivization. And that is, that's obviously way more complicated, but it's, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised BGA is giving away free stuff before they're, uh, you know, working on the complicated thing for months on end. Yeah. I wouldn't read that much into it. I'm thinking this is just their normal, their normal uh, event stuff. Well, yeah. just free stuff Could to give away well so be. people stay with the game. So, yeah, it yeah, makes sense. Yeah. It's probably going to be something okay. huge, like, you know, get 300 kills or something like that. I don't know. Of course, a, a monthly uh, mech could be, like, uh, play 20 matches a month, something like that. You, you To just hmm. ensure that you have a certain amount of play every month, that people probably, come back yeah. and play a certain amount, uh, that would make some sense to me. True, true. Yeah. I would also think it's something like play games rather than any specific thing you have to try. For. Yep. And then lastly, for the first quarter, we have Intel Gathering on future changes. So, continuing from what they've been doing since December. Quarter two, improve existing content and localization. How much loadouts? Uh, By the way, I'm just uh, new mech variants is done. Oh, I guess because they asked everyone and we got a whole. It's done. <laughs> yeah, the whole yeah, bunch yeah, done. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So they got it together, but they haven't put it out yet. So yeah, <laughs> update trial max, uh, new player video tutorials. I don't know why they're going to have that when you have it in the beginning. I, I guess uh, do it in stages I mean, or something. continuing on. Mm, that's kind of weird. To start with, you ask for everyone to do tutorials oh, on the radio yeah, yeah, yeah. game or something like that. Here's okay. an introduction to the yeah. Mac Lab. 
we're going to have a contest. All right, we picked out the MechLab thing. All right, next month, everyone, we don't want you to burn out, but next month we're going to do, you know, faction warfare. We need yeah. a faction warfare tutorial. Yeah. So that would be my guess, is you don't want to have everyone splurge randomly with videos. Uh, try and keep it focused and do it slowly over time. That makes sense. That makes sense. Could be that. Could also be just everyone produce videos and... Um... Once every three months, we're going to take a look at all the available videos and choose one to be featured. Yep. And update yeah. the featured video every so often, something like that. Okay. This is their own checklist after all. So it's like just yeah. announcing yeah. the intention. They're going to keep doing it. All right. Wiki? Update the wiki and add wiki contributors. Thank Looking God. forward to this one. Yeah. I wish they, in some ways, almost just open it up because now I'd have to actually ask to be a wiki contributor so I could argue over the light, like probe page. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is good. This is going to help out new players, uh, especially since a lot of stuff changed. No one really knows how, how uh, BAP works. No one really knows how TAG works and what it works against, what it doesn't work against, or just whatever. And so you always get those, you always get questions. And so you want to know up-to-date information. That's that's going to be good for new players and for even me, because I suck. So. <laughs> yep. Yep. Thank you for um, agreeing. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, any, anything, yeah. anything could help you. Yeah, I know. It can okay. only go up from where you are. It can only go up from here, man. <laughs> um, okay, the next one is the one that people are probably most looking forward to map improvements, especially like, okay, update maps with small quality improvements, um, but most importantly, spawn point fixes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe this is the big thing people are talking about right now. So, yeah. This needs to happen as soon as possible. Well, at least, you know, drop a union drop ship, right? And since we're going to rotate anyways, just put everyone together. So they just run around circle. I had that last night, dude. We ran around, um, um, oh God, what's it, um, what's the volcano one? I forgot what the hell the name, I'm getting old. The, the volcano map. Terra Firma? Uh, terra Firma. No, not that one. The other one. Um, Costa you mountain. Terra Firma. Not Terra Firma. The other one. Oh. The um, caustic. the caustic, yeah, caustic. <laughs> we we round around that six times, literally six times. Run around nice. caustic. I was like, "What It'll the be hell?" Are you... Fun if you're in the good mic. I know, but still. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of, speaking of spawn points, I had um, a yeah. terrible experience yesterday where I spawned on Solaris City, mm -hmm. right at the edge of the map, and in front of me is the ocean that's out of bounds, and because I'm using a hotel. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I started for working forward immediately, and it took me three to four seconds to orient myself because I usually don't pay attention at the beginning of the run and just keep working forward. And by the time I realized I was out of bounds, I was already dead. So that was <laughs> <laughs> the spawns are so bad that I literally couldn't participate in a match because I was out of bounds. <laughs> and they yeah, you killed one, yourself. One, I mean, uh, spawns are certainly worth uh, fixing, just such that you know you don't have spawns instantly able to shoot each other at the start of the match. Uh, and other uh, quibbles like that. But uh, a big thing also with the maps, and just the matchmaker and things, is obviously just balancing tonnage and the fact that mechs are sp spread all over the place and that the group is always an alpha lance, which is often sort of supposed to be, I think, the faster lance. So if you're dropping assault mechs in a group, you're often in a very bad starting spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like Spawnbone fixes up basically a band aid for the whole uh, group and tonnage thingy that has been going on. And I mean, if they do the spawn points properly, I think it's a band light that can f keep back most of the issues. But long term, they absolutely need to readdress the whole matchmaking system. Yeah, it, it, it's going to help the game to do it nonetheless, even if it's on its own. But uh, I think uh, uh, in the long run, all of it should be looked over, of course. Yeah, that's for uh, quarter okay. one of next year, probably. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it mostly depends on the population of the game by the end of the year. Yeah, true, true. Okay. Uh, it improves the like unbalanced maps, changing paths and cover. Um, like Alpine Peaks comes to mind. That's completely an asymmetrical map. Uh, trick lighting. Yeah, just small things they can quickly do with map quality. This map one is interesting. Right? Two new mech variants of existing chassis. So. Like, there's no maybe in here that just, yeah, we're going to do two new mech variants in the second quarter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mech scale for fun and roll versus a volumetric. Yep. yep. Taking another look at the mech scale. That was all 
also talked about before. Weapon equipment change has passed too. Um, just updating again, more improving jump jets. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. I, I would I would like more jump jetty jump jets. Well, you do have that tree um, in the skill tree, though. You uh, go and improve it that way. Yeah, but the skill tree effects are so minuscule in most cases. It's well, it's rarely like, worth to take it. Yeah. Unless you're in a, like, uh, what was, the, what were spider. the ones? Viper. And Viper, spider. spider. Yeah. Some of those few. Cicada, like the... assassin, they can jump good, so to speak. Yeah. But yeah. even then, you're often, you, there's so there's so much power to be gotten. Survival tree, auxiliary tree, firepower tree. Uh, it, it feels hard to take away from those um, staples, <laughs> putting Dude, it into like, jump jets. Yeah. Jump, jump jets doesn't keep you alive. It doesn't give you magic items, and <laughs> it, it doesn't actually kill the enemy. Next up, examine the match scoring overall. Also an important point, um, especially with the changes to pilot skill rating, where match score is uh, still an integral part. There are some things McBrown and they just aren't rewarded as hard as other things. And mm -hmm. yeah, good thing. Localization. That okay. was completely not on my mind at all for Macro Online. Localization start. So, um, Ian, um, is there like, can you switch to German in MWO? Is it all in English? I have English? no idea. I've never tried. I don't think you can. It's quite an old game, and it might very well just be everything <clears throat> in English because there's a whole bunch of usability features that are, you know, standard practice nowadays that aren't in MWO. Because, uh, yeah, if, if you have the game in German, you have it in Spanish. And you know, uh, many many other languages. You know, it can broaden your appeal uh, or your markets. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense to lo expand localization. Other things, at least I've come across some people who talked about like uh, colorblind modes. That wasn't implemented when MWO first came out, but a lot of people, uh, you know, can't really sort of tell the differences, you know, between various different colors. And so just having the options to change how UI displays and how thermal vision looks would A, just be great for everyone, and B, would help people who have uh, you know, various different uh, uh, vi visual and other disabilities. Mm -hmm. And those should be, at least if you're trying to bring the game up to a modern standard, along with localization at some point, I would love to see usability features. Yeah, like you said, it will definitely open the markets to different countries. So, I mean, it'd be good. It'd yeah, be very good. Like, um, everyone in game is marked. You know, there's blue team and red team, uh, and I'm pretty sure there there's you know certain color blindness that you can't tell between blue and red. Well, guess what? MWO is unplayable to you for the most part. You can yeah. sort of, you can, you know, the mechs you can lock on to are enemies, but <laughs> 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 it. it, it it, it it would be it would be such um, at least you, you know if you just change the enemy team to be I forget the exact color but you say you know you change them to purple you can tell the difference between blue and purple so to speak then oh wow suddenly the game is a lot more playable when I'm on a similar playing field as everybody else I'm not at a disadvantage I yeah. don't feel yeah yeah so yeah. those kind of features I think should totally be on the on this list true. Okay, so back to localization. You can change the language on the website. Uh, mm -hmm. from English to French and German. Although it doesn't seem like it uh, really updates every single menu. Like if I go into my profile, a lot of things are still in English mm. and I'm not able to find an option for the game itself. So I would mm -hmm. assume it's English only. Well, that's coming, you know, basically for, for localization. It's like March. It's not done yet. But, uh, yeah, I, we were talking I, about. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. With, this, with how common okay. it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like for me, it was a question of um, do they already have some localization that I just need to expand on, or is this mm -hmm. something that's like completely okay. new? Yeah. And okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I I honestly lack the knowledge and experience to judge whether that's a important priority. Okay. Yeah, it's always hard to tell whether suddenly you explode into a new market because you've added more languages. But the uh, simple fact is, of course, if he isn't localized to other languages, then if somebody only speaks that language, they're obviously not going to pick up your game. So you, you know, it only adds opportunities. Whether those opportunities pan out is another story. Hmm. Yeah. Social. Right, then the refer a friend program. We've heard about uh, more dev relogs, roadmap updates, and 
monthly email campaign. Oh God. What? Unsubscribe. Well, I always get the emails about two or three days after the event started, so um, I don't know if that's going to do anything. That's fun. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, literally, I'm looking like, I already did that event. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I'm, I'm not a fan of monthly emails or just just general the spammy kind of emails that most games have, but okay. Yeah. If they believe it adds value. As long as I can unsubscribe, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, events and freebies. Freebies. Yep, <laughs> same things. Yeah. Um, there will be a summer loot bag event. Cool, cool. Loot bags are always fun. And more intel gathering. Discussion armor balance on. for Jenner. Yeah, oh God, yeah. I don't use my Jenner because it sucks now. 16 armor on the arms just does not cut it whatsoever. Right yeah, it, it, yeah, the Jenner in general just um, it, it, part of this will be part of the um, whether they actually rescale it because the Jenner is such a big target yeah. and it takes a lot of damage to the torsos. So they said instead of just buffing the torsos, let's move the armor around for some reason. And yeah, I know, I know. That means yeah, sure, the torsos are tankier, but now where its weapons are mounted in the arms are very squishy. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do see a lot of Jenners like uh, getting disarmed. At least the energy Jenners in particular. Uh, that only arm mounts, like there's a one with six energy and nothing else, yeah. and that gets disarmed a lot, or loses half its firepower, and it just uh, feels awful to play, more so than just being a torso mech that explodes whenever anyone looks at you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I forget, like the armor rebalance, it was for Jenna Jaeger mech, it wasn't for Rifleman, uh, because the Rifleman is actually kind of good at shielding, but it was for the Stalker. It's just sort of funny which ones they do and don't list at this point. Well, that just, that's just probably just saying, hey, uh, these mechs and then more. You know, that's just a, a generalization list to kind of give we'll, you an we'll idea. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we, well, we'll see what they, uh, what they actually want to touch on when we get round to yeah, it. So yeah. To uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought the next one was actually pretty cool. Uh, new item lists like metallic patterns, custom UI colors, voice packs, sound packs, laser cuzzle laser color like customization they're doing the same thing that world of tanks does where you can modify a bunch of different stuff inside your inside your base if you want to go pay the money for it or just like whatever and i think this is actually going to be good um like once they do that global patterns cockpit item bonuses added value oh okay that's that's kind of cool you know all that so kind of stuff and i think it's good discussion stage so yeah at least that's the time to ask for you know, whatever you want and see if they'll decide to implement it next yeah, quarter or the yeah. quarter after or something that's cool that's that's actually going to be good because you know a lot of people want to go paint the little cockpits of different colors you know kind of have a good time you know that kind of thing they want to do that kind of stuff but yeah you know be it'll be good it'll be good there's no downside to it so at least i think there's no drawbacks sort of to discussing other than at least sometimes yeah. um, there's only so much attention from the community. So sometimes if there's something that you think is more of a priority, like if weapon balance has been absolutely god awful, <laughs> before you start talking about more cost uh, cosmetics that you're yeah. trying to put into the game, first try and fix the game that you might have broken. Yeah, yeah, true. The trial max and loadouts, batch three. Um, okay. Uh, investigation skill out trial max. Oh, oh. Skilling out trial max. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, they're only changing the loadouts yeah. for a while and they are finally considering whether to skill them up. I'm surprised in a way that, you know, skilling them up shouldn't be too hard. Though again, it's a little tricky to ask what should it be skilled up as? What is what's the ideal build to give a new player? because uh, you know that's going to inc that's going to imply what you should and shouldn't take from the skill tree. Mm-hmm. Maybe and... each time you actually have a trial mech, you gain skills. It has a little, um, like, a blue thing um, like around the skill saying, you should take this, kind of like a tutorial type thing. You should take this or go down this tree for go ahead and do it. And then, uh, you know, you don't have to, but, like, if you want to have a really good mech, this way here's what all the pros do type thing or something, you know, like, uh, for the trial mechs. That way they kind of get used to it, used to what's going what, basically. Yeah, drawback though with that is, of course, uh, you are starting out with an unskilled mech, and there's the question of, uh, are you making them, like, if they click through the skill tree and, like, it says, okay, first things first, let's add survival. Is that survival for only that mech? Does that mean you have to, quote-unquote, skill up all the trials? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I would just give out trial mechs that are already skilled. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
again, it's one of those things. We'll see how they implement it when the time yep. comes. Mm. Okay. Quality life GSP amount on Mech Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's good. Mech Bay UI. Oh, so it's near the bottom left. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because I was like, why do I need to see GSP when I'm equipping medium lasers? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. that part, that, that's on the skill part of the tree, you know, when I'm, uh, uh, that that would be a place to see it as well. But yeah, yeah. okay. Quick play map. Um, Community-driven design. That would be interesting. That should be good. That should be fun to go yep. and listen to everybody. That would be good. Yep, and that's why they did the Intel gathering the uh, pr prior quarter. So mm -hmm. yeah. hopefully that will help inform their designers a little bit, and then the designers can do a proper job. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and hopefully we'll actually get it in the third quarter, and not, not too much later. Yeah. Okay, yep. um, update maps, key quick play maps, okay. One point fixes, improve select unbalanced maps, a change in passive cover like before, tweak lighting yep. where appropriate. That okay, makes sense. New mech stuff, two new variants, uh, Crux sets for AIDS, readdressing um, mech mobility, uh, special skill tree, um, possible new mech chassis. That's cool. That's not something I was expecting for this year to even have the option of maybe getting a new mech chassis. For a full mech chassis, so it's going to be completely, you know, we're yep. going to make full the... mech chassis. Okay. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad to possible, see they're but... finally looking for quirks as well. It's, uh, mm -hmm. They've been giving out a whole bunch of free mechs that are probably all the bad mechs, and it's like, all oh, right, the, everyone performed terribly in them, and uh, new players are feeling rather depressed. Maybe we should skill it, give them some more quirks. <laughs> yep. More weapon equipment changes, localization, skill tree, grind reduction. Yeah. At this point, we're getting to the more generic stuff. Really. Yeah, yeah. Trick or tree loot bags. Yeah. Uh, Intel, future Solaris, future uh, faction play, yeah. Um, make faction play maps available for quick play. That's, I want to see. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, there are a lot of maps I want to go see that's like, oh, that's be a cool map to go play in quick play. Some are too big, though. Some are way too big, so might want to reduce it down in size, yeah. I guess. But, but yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, quick play maps viable for Solaris. So uh, mm, <laughs> my yeah, mm, large laser flee to troll on polar highlands. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that I I don't know about that one though. You'll have to yeah. <laughs> That'll be interesting. That's the reason they're putting it in, into a gathering rather than just doing it. And, and they put a question mark there too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and then lastly, quarter four. A bit more of the same of the skill tree. Yeah, skill trial max. Skill trial max. So hopefully uh, more quality of life stuff with the heat management values. Uh, okay. Yep. Simplify command wheel. Simpl I, I never use that like anyways. Yep, we've talked about it. Um, UI performance pass and scaling. I get it's a low priority. I'm still sad it's only at the end of the year. Mm. <laughs> it's so annoying. You quickly map. And, yeah. Release, release the new map. In okay. Quarter yeah. Four. yeah. Oh. Hopefully at the beginning of the quarter, not at the very end. True. And again, two new Mac variants, possible new chassis, and more community feedback. Weapons equipment uh, changes past four. Any year weapon assessment. More okay. community feedback. Yeah. And new features, game modes, a lot of options in here. Um, I'm going to assume this all comes down to whatever the community feedback in the quarter before that is. Well, plus also, too, it depends on like 8 versus 8 and 12 versus 12 modes and separate the solo group queues. they got to have a population strong enough for, for that to happen. So depends on what they do this year and how the people they attract to go play the game to go stay towards the end of the year to go ahead and start that, go even consider that. So, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's yeah. a reason I'm kind of, we're kind of skipping over these parts because they're too far in the future to really make accurate predictions. Yeah, right now. yeah, yeah. Uh, very broadly, though, at least it's um, uh, it's sort of a bit slow. Is the plan to start with this year? Just small little changes. <clears throat> uh, those small little changes will continue throughout the year, but they are at least intending to ramp up. Obviously, with things like entire new chassis and variants, at least in the long run. So at the end of the year. You know, they might have a much more of a you know machine churning, much more people on staff working on MWO, 
and for the start of the year, you know, it, it's uh, it's still a bit of a slow burn. Well, aren't they actually going to release it on Xbox and PlayStation Four, like MechWarrior Five? I thought they're going to do that this year, right? Yeah. So they're going to have a lot of uh, um, people working on that, correct? So, yeah, so yeah. The, the, the main... Yeah. Um, so the impression I've got, at least from what they've talked about, is like, you know, if they're going to make a new map, they're not going to make use of the map designers within PGI who currently exist. They are currently working on MechWarrior 5 mm -hmm. and their other property. Uh, so if... Uh, if uh, Darren and uh, Matt want to make a new map, they say to um, uh, Russ, uh, we want to make a map for MWO. We think this will help the game. We need to hire a new map designer. And so they're getting yeah. new people in-house, getting them to learn MWO and ramping, you know, getting them to build up a new content chain with yeah, new people. Yeah. That's my impression. That's the impression I get too, yeah. It's just some, um, and that's why it's towards the end of the year because... Uh, I thought it was going to be in March or May. That's when they're going to go ahead and release MechWarrior 5 on the on the consoles. Or at least talked about or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, this, that, though. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm not sure how much MW5, um, it, it could totally sap um, resources away from MWO yeah. and such. And we'll just have to face that when it comes. Because, yeah, they're releasing on multiple platforms. So they'll need to probably patch the hell out of it with, obviously, the new DLC possibly coming out. And at least with their initial plans from what we heard last is that they also wanted to, after the release, do another DLC like shortly afterwards. Yeah, at least yeah. that was the initial plan. And that is obviously in the pipeline. And that yeah. might need some extra help kicking out the door. So, yeah, who, who knows how yeah. it'll pan out. But yeah, MW5 could totally be a resource hog. But my impression is for MWO, they're getting exclusive staff or at least their own staff. And they have, you know, EG7 to provide more support in general. Yeah, makes so, sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, they're, they're ramping up later in the year. That's at least their intentions. And at least it's good hearing those intentions. And it's not just a year waiting for quality of life and fixes to slowly be implemented into the game. True, there, true. There will be new mechs. There will actually be weapon balance changes and mech changes. Though in some ways, I'm actually been quite happy with MWO being AFK. I'm kind of worried in some ways. Like, oh no, <laughs> are they going to do more of those brilliant changes to weapon systems and mechs that, you know, I enjoyed in the past? Are we going to get, you know, round two of that? We'll see. You know, we'll yep. see like on Other that than side. Than it's too strong. <laughs> okay. So uh, what's next on the agenda then? <laughs> All right, uh, just touch on the disruptive sale. 50% um, off a whole bunch of weapons and stuff. Or horns, yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I uh, I found actually, um, I'm buying a lot of LB20s for my mechs, so I bought a bunch of LB20s for 50% off. And yay. I should do that too, <laughs> actually. Hey, Mountain Camo Line. Oh my God. Mountain Line is half off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get it for all my mechs. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, buy some I do, weapons I, too. I like, I like digital... Uh, Oh yeah, uh, yeah it, it does actually quite cool. work as a nice camo. If you want a more serious looking mech, those are okay. But uh, yeah, it, it's not the most amazing sale. But uh, we've just had a whole bunch of sales at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, well that's a sale we got. So, oh, special event. Be back. I yep. did some of this, not much of it though. Um, I remember a lot of it off the top of my head. Um, it's mostly down to a play game with different mechs. Uh, you have to use all of the weapon types. You have to use different uh, chassis weights. Um, there's stuff in there for flanking and uh, scouting. and It's basically the usual stuff. Like play the game and play the game with a variety of mechs and you're just going to complete okay. it that really, makes sense. really fast. Yeah, okay, yep. cool. Yeah. The only issue is always, at least if you ask everyone to do a crazy amount of damage, like with missiles, then the learn boats come out. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. It's there it was a decent event. The rewards were on two amazing, like 200 MC here, 200 MC there, a couple days of premium time, a couple of C builds. But hey, but it's a decent event to just it wasn't have bad. while we play. I did some of it. Gives it wasn't premium bad, time, yeah. gives MC a lot, a lot of C builds. So yeah, yeah, it was fine. Yeah. True. Yeah, and I guess the main thing with this event is that it was alongside of this particular event. The Agreed. Dev streamer, streamer hunt event. Oh, little thing on the payback event, just uh, it's the mm -hmm. span of it. It was like for two weeks, so you had plenty of time actually to do it. Yeah, so, oh, which yeah. was nice. Better. Um, I almost I got in into this case, one. I, yeah, in my case, I completed it during the Dev and Streamer hunt event, which 
I'll be honest, I <laughs> I didn't even know about it until I started playing and uh, saw people talk about it. But yeah, it was <laughs> a death hunt. Yeah. Yeah, there's a stream event. I I personally at least don't particularly care for this because I'm not someone who really cares much about Twitch or streaming. I, I mean, there's certainly a lot of people who get aggregate around those uh, content creators. Uh, but I, I usually just like playing the game with people personally. Yeah. Um, the fact with this event, just somewhat, is that you know you, it's it's all just sort of a bit of a roll of the die that you have to uh, be in the match with one of these uh, players, and you have to remember that player, and you have to just sort of you know have a mech that's a good matchup against them, and be the one who happens to give them the killing blow, yeah, whether yeah. you're even on the winning team or the team that you know. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It's just a lot of the roll of the die, and it's not really something you're deliberately going after. So it's just like a little bonus, and it's only one day. So it's almost just not worth my time paying attention to it, at least personally speaking. I mean, like, yeah. what? Well, go on. What is on, really on. cool about this event is um, all of the streamers that came in could choose which reward they would drop when they die. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's a new system they were testing this time, uh, which they're planning on using far more in the future. And I think that was really cool. Like, if you're a streamer who wanted to participate, you just tell yep. them, hey, I want to drop this particular cockpit item because that's just so meme for my channel. Mm -hmm. And it happened. Oh, if you killed Cyclone Check, you got the Checker Lantern Rohan. Ah, damn it. He took a mine. I should have hunted him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, um, um, I, I was in it for too late. I uh, I emailed Darren to get in. And he's like, uh, we can't really get you in now, but we'll get you in like, next time. So I like, cool. No problem. But the event was actually pretty cool. The only issue I had with it was um, most of these people are tier one players. Okay, so the tier five guys who would have a chance to go get in to go and do this. I mean, literally almost no one's tier five that's a streamer. Uh, but unless yeah. you use like a uh, like a, you know alt account or stuff like that. So they really get a, they didn't get a chance on that. Plus, like you said, Biter, I was literally playing and uh mark nicholson was actually playing too like uh, on the opposite team and i was running around he was an assassin i'm like okay cool i'll kill the assassin and he was there by chance i killed the assassin by chance he was mark nicholson by chance i got the dev you know medal i'm like and i didn't even realize it until he came on my stream and said hey you kill me i'm like and he's out there going okay <laughs> I was like, okay i guess i did i don't know so, uh, uh... <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, that is a very valid point. I do agree about the tier one thing. Yeah. You know, the the ironic counterpoint would just be that you have uh, the devs playing as well. Yeah. And with the new system, there'll be a lot of them dropping in tier five, probably. Well, so, actually, like I was reading the boards. <laughs> you know, most of them are actually tier one. Um, oh, right. I think Mark was tier three because I'm tier three too. But uh, but a lot of them are actually tier one. So if they made it so it randomizes them like the tier system into uh, dropping into whatever tier five through one that'll be better for the players to go ahead and like at least have this a chance is something they have acknowledged um mm -hmm. i've seen uh i forgot who it was in which chat but bomber was talking one of the twitch chats about this mm -hmm. and uh, one of the suggestions were that at least streamers could use alt accounts yeah to drop stuff. yeah yeah i guess and i mean especially pgi devs um no one really knows the name except for like the prominent community facing devs uh so they're only recognizable by their icon they have the little pgi icon yeah it so says pgi no, no, underscore their name basically but even then i was i didn't know who i killed so it's like okay cool you know but um but yeah if they did that it'll be a little bit better i guess to randomize the uh, tiers or something i don't know i don't know like alt accounts i really want to make an alt account though because then i have another like email i gotta go make and everything i just want to do that yeah, I think one nice thing, even if I don't, uh, yeah, I, I have a little empathy towards it. I think uh, it does really incentivize the streamers to actually um, stream on that day and yeah. to probably stream for at least a while since, you know, that's kind of the point of the hunt and it's, it's trying to get you yeah. more exposure, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Well, the thing is, too, that like I noticed there was 531 people when I looked at it like one o'clock. I was like, wow, that's a lot of people watching um, like MechWare Online, which I haven't seen that for a long time. And I'm sure there's like you know other or other like instances that people were watching that was even higher than that or even lower like whatever basically. But what? team Dang kills it, do not count. Team kills do not count. <laughs> ah, they changed that one. Yeah. Dang. Well, obviously you got to put that in there. <laughs> but, I mean, there yeah. was I, I did wonder about that. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, lo lo lots of streamers are participating here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think this is really cool that they took in this many uh, streamers, even smarter streamers. Yeah. Like, give them, I, I don't know if you specifically helped them <laughs> by getting them hunted down, but at least, uh, at least for people hunting for the items, it's easier to encounter them. Yeah. One yeah. one thought is perhaps yeah, since there is a whole bunch, at least in a lot of communities, with uh, Twitch streaming, you know, about uh, sync dropping or you know, uh, hunting down streamers, stream sniping. Uh, using the the keyword hunt here, it might give people the wrong idea, so to speak. Um, I, I'm just wondering if there'll be a if in the future it might be an idea to rename it to something more neutral, such that it's you know, it's like you. If you happen to kill a dev or a streamer, you know you get a bonus. It's just you know sort of the. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, hunt is it sounds cool, but it also is not quite right for streaming. At I least, mean, that's uh, that's what it is. The that's what it is. Yeah, hunting streamers, and you're trying to sync drop against them. I... Yeah, that, that's a little ironic since, of course, you know at least uh, Twitch and often a lot of terms of service, you know, you could often count that as harassment, and it gets rather confusing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but the, the, ultimately a bunch of drama. But to stop that as a streamer, though, like I have a thir uh, 15 to 30 second delay depending on what game I'm playing. And to stream snipe, I mean, I'm going to be 15 seconds or 30 seconds away from whatever location that I was at. So it's like really doesn't do anything, you know, basically stream sniping wise. Yeah. Yeah. If know? streamers did uh, several minutes delay, that yeah. could uh, very much. Uh, but then it's, you're not exactly hunting them. You're just, uh, you're watching their stream and then always uh, missing their drops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was a fun I, I, event, I'm though. Saying, like, I'm, I'm just saying that if there was a cool way to, re you know, a convenient way to rename it, uh, just slightly change the tone, I, I would approve. But I'm not sure exactly why, what, how would I rename it? How about uh, attack the streamers in his mech with flowers and then hopefully you get a kill event? How's that one? And yeah, would that be cool? A little, a little bit long winded. Okay, yeah, true. Huh? Streamer good biscuits. Streamer what? Biscuits. Like uh, you could call it almost like the pinata event or something like that. Just you happen to kill one of these characters and, and then you know, like a pinata. Explosion of the world. Yes. Violent in a biscuit. <laughs> I was thinking your usual flamer tactics. Just turn them in a biscuit. Oh okay, yes. yeah. <laughs> and whoever yeah. completes the biscuit gets the item. Oh god. <laughs> you need to kill them. I forget. Um, with pinatas, are they used? At, is it a certain time of year? I'm not familiar with the. I think it's the birthdays. Day. I'm not sure. You know, certain types yeah, of, you know, birthdays. Because you, you could have it be any time being a pinata event. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if, if they're pinata, it's not saying you should hunt them down. It's just, oh, an extra bonus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and streamers. I, I like his picture here. I think that's really cool. A great dev hunt and, you know, basically puts in, you know, the little arrow. I think that's pretty cool. That was actually pretty nice. Yeah, the majority this... of ones you could actually get are streamers. It, it should really be the other way around. The great streamer hunt. Oh, and devs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the and four devs. Where they are like three or four people who are technically devs. Yeah. Well, so uh, we're, yeah, okay. we're kind of uh, just uh, wasting time because we don't really want to get to the next topic. But should we, should yeah, we let's move go. on to the last topic for the yeah, day? Yeah, let's go. All right. So yeah. at least the thing I avoid with, with the all streamer haste. event. With this, uh, uh, to connect with the streamer event is at least a prominent streamer was what banned before this event. Yeah. Uh, and at least ostensibly the reason was uh, from from at least you know the initial reportings was uh, oh this streamer chaotic harmony was uh, dropping with a lance of LRMs and that you're you know, ruining people's days you might be you know, killing the streamers you're going to ruin people's fun on this fun event and so therefore uh, we're going to ban you preemptively and that caused quite a ruckus within the community. What well, was you banned before or I thought it was actually he was during the event. Before the event. So on the day of the event he got banned for I believe 24 hours. Because um, I watched like some of his uh... oh sorry go ahead sorry. <laughs> To be unable to participate in events and it's not only him that got banned but also the people who were playing with him on on, on stream on the days before because mm. i watched like some of his thing and uh he actually played against star wolf and uh and lady wolf uh there was a big line on the top of that yeah oh, okay oh, okay yes <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yeah, people got confused because he was playing clips on the stream. Okay. But yeah, okay. anyway, he got he got banned for his intention to play uh, a coordinated LRM lens. Um, at least that's the very surface level um, observation. And then rather than just being like, okay, fuck it, I'm not doing anything macro related today, he <laughs> kept his stream going for eight hours, just ranting about PGI, um, about the bans, about allegations against him and. Yeah. It was interesting. What's maybe even more interesting, which was my part in the in the whole thing, is uh, he encouraged people to take LRMs into uh, the queue and like just use LRMs doing throughout the streamer hunt event. And as you may or may not know, I'm a huge advocate for LRMs, so <laughs> I had a freaking blast. <laughs> I w I would have played LRMs anyway. This didn't change anything for me. But going up against so many LRM players who are not as knowledgeable in how to use LRMs and finally get these matchups where you have five learn max on the other side, five learn max on your team, and then who can learn better? <laughs> I had such a blast playing yesterday. It was amazing. <laughs> really I, one of the best days ever. I do like fun. the irony, of course, that, you know, um, on the surface it was, oh, we don't want four people taking LRMs. So... Uh, you know, we're going to invoke the Streisand effect and make it so that you yeah. know a third of each team on that <laughs> other side are LRMs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was absolutely beautiful, especially when people started to uh, catch on and use a uh, crazy amounts of um, AMS of ECM of light max trying to counter those LRM max. Like you would actually see a lot of tactical play yesterday. Mm. I think it was a really okay. good day for Macquarie. Okay. And okay. yeah, for me personally, just like. I'm used to playing against AMS. I'm used to playing against ECM. I know how to counter the counter tactics. And mm -hmm. it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played last to night too. <laughs> and it was fun. You know, like I, I actually had a blast, but like, I want to comment on what's, what's here. Like what we just talked about. Yeah. Let's... Like I know so the background think... of it though. Hold on a second. I, I, I know I, the background yeah, on it. Um, is that the whole point of the game is actually hunt the streamer. So it doesn't really matter if you use Lerms, Gauss Rifles, or anything else. Even have a tactical group to come in, go just kind of just jump in and go and kill people. Whole whole point is to kill streamers, period. And so yeah, him I using on, Lerms, yeah. On yeah. the surface. Yeah, on the uh, surface, that was it. Yeah. This, um, this looks really bad because obviously yeah. uh, LRMs are just part of the game. It's just a means of playing. Um, you know, why, why are you upset about LRMs compared to other lances that can also be incredibly potent you know so mm -hmm. um it, it, it was like a lot of people like wait so you're saying we can't lrm for the event it's just yeah you know, the tone was really yeah. awful and uh, the fact it's also uh they're they're discriminating people based on intent rather than their actions like if if this particular streamer was streaming you know they take a lrm drop deck and they're they're like cussing out and being absolute assholes or something in the stream it's like okay i can understand why you know community service would want to jump in because it's clear that they are are actually being a detriment an active detriment yeah but yeah. It, it, it's sort of just um we think you know you guys are going to go out and head to the pub um we're going to preemptively ban you before you get into a brawl and it's like well they haven't actually Brawled. They haven't even had a drink yet. They're all they're planning is, so to speak, just to have a, a few drinks. But uh, obviously, yeah, there's more to the story. But on the surface, at least, this is much more down to PGI and chaotic harmony, sort of the beef between them, so to speak, the bad bloods. Um, and that's more the reason behind the band. At least that's my impression. Than it particularly being about the LRMs, the fact that they're dropping as a lance of LRMs yeah. or anything like that, and the fact that they use that as their excuse just completely muddied the water. And you mm -hmm. know, do, doing when they chose to do the ban, everything like that. It just it was like it's pitch perfect. The worst PR move you could possibly <laughs> do. I mean, I, I just, was afraid to actually use missiles. You know, like, yeah. like once this yeah. came out, I was so, like, oh my god, what? So I think maybe maybe to structure ourselves with any, but there are a couple of uh, perspectives to look at this from. Like mm -hmm. um, what I started out with was basically my perspective as an outsider, uh, just what happened, what was noticeable from someone who is not involved in drama at all. Um, there's obviously a question how PGI reacted and uh, the whole confusion in the community. Like, am I not allowed to play LRMs today? Am I not allowed to? group up today am i not allowed to sync drop today or was it some kind of are you allowed am i not allowed to hunt, am hunt i not them, allowed to yeah. hunt the streamers because I'm oh no i ruined their fun yeah 
And then lastly, <laughs> there's the whole the whole backstory behind this band. And uh, yeah, let's let's focus on what most player probably took most notice of. What Bider just said, the way PGI worded this out and how it got spread throughout the community mm-hmm. and the confusion it caused. So. I mean, by already touched on it. It was a PR nightmare for PGI. And personally, the main thing I would have expected from them is uh, as soon as they realized that this was blowing up, I mean, um, Chaotic Harmony, even though he wasn't even playing the game, had the second highest viewership number only behind Beef mm-hmm. in the whole macro category, which, by the way, is uh, kind of nuts. Um, I would have expected a statement of some sort. Something to clarify, no, this is not about Lerms. No, this is not about group drops. You are free to play Lerms. You are free to group drop. You are free to sync drop with streamers to hunt them for this particular event. And that's just something we didn't get. Quite the opposite. We got some uh, messages that I'm not going to show because they were just typed in chat by uh, Darren. And obviously, they were typed really fast. So uh, I'm not going to go too much in detail. But we got messages that kind of conflicted themselves, and it wasn't obvious. And so, I started, I started the day being completely unsure whether it had potential to get me banned yesterday. Yeah, um, with uh, I know at least on No Guts No Galaxy at the same time, uh, Darren did at least hop on for a yeah. short while. Um, but at least he wasn't the one who made the elective decision to ban, and he just sort of um, uh, he's sort of out of the loop or at least it sort of feels just a little bit like he's like repeating the same lines about oh they're doing these lrm drop decks it's disruptive they're going to ruin the people's fun you know all this narrative stuff that really doesn't cut to the reason why pgi you know did the ban in the first place i mean i get that they did the ban because of the event that was what galvanized them to do it but it's also yeah this is all much bigger story and at least initially it, you know darren sort of saying oh you know i'm community manager sure but uh, it's not my job to handle bands or you yeah. know to work this out within the community and i don't know what's in within his job description all i can say is obviously community manager sounds like some you know this is a big thing blowing up in the community um uh, it's a huge pr nightmare you're the most public uh, face of the company and my thought is just that you know his response came off as very cold as in oh it's just not my not my job not my call he's a, he, you know he's done bad things he got what he deserved and it's like ah oh, this this is this is just pour, pouring gasoline on the fire you know um i i'm not saying that you know darren needs to be the messiah who goes in there swinging in to save the day <laughs> but um yeah. as always pgi yeah. i think just um PGI sometimes just comes off, comes off as kind of cold and callous, and just a little bit of compassion or sort of uh, even-handedness would go a long way, particularly when it comes to things like citing terms of service, because at least as a player, like as as uh, you know, Ian mentioned, like, am I allowed to take LRMs? Because suddenly, you know, PGI seems suddenly very callous and just like smacking people down for their weapon choices. And it just sort of feels like it comes out of the blue preemptively. It's just, um, yeah, uh, you have to be very careful with how you use your terms of service because it's all down to PGI's discretion and you want to earn the trust of the community. You want to make it seem like you are, you know, using the terms of service correctly. Like, uh, uh, this is a terrible analogy, perhaps I shouldn't use it, but, you know, um, th- there was a certain United States president who was on a certain social media site, and they did not ban him for quite some time until they knew yeah. that people wouldn't disagree with it. Because, you know, it's obviously a pl- public platform, you can't just deplatform a president, but, you know, they did it when things went a step too far. And yeah. that same, you can't just preemptively ban somebody because you don't like them. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, um just like you said man it was a it, it was a cluster uh simple reasons like i mean every everybody in chat everybody in different chats and, and even you know talking to people are like oh what i can't hunt a streamer i can't hunt a dev with missiles it's like what the hell's going on and it created so much confusion that i mean literally like you know like me and Ian, uh, you know we were conversing back and forth like uh dude what the hell i don't want to play right now i don't want to play because i might get banned for some stupid ass reason and so there's more to this story that we'll get into but uh but on the surface so 
I think PGI handled it crap. I mean, horribly, horribly. And uh, they they should went into more context than throwing the book at a person for uh, quote, you know, doing this and not really explaining a little bit more into it. And yeah, you guys are right. I mean, I think and, and the poor Darren, poor Darren, man, poor Darren. He mm-hmm. you know he's sitting there like, dude, I'm just keeping manner, but. Uh, I'm just keeping you like manager, but unfortunately though, so, he's the face of PGI now, you know, and so everyone looks towards him and he got all the flack for a lot of it. What I would say is even if you're sort of, um, if, if to put myself in Darren's shoes, um, you know, he's sort of saying, oh, it's not your constitutional rights to do this and that. Oh, you know, he deserved it kind of like basically in my head, it's kind of an analogy that PGI just suddenly ran up to someone and punched them in the eye and they left them with a black eye and everyone's like, whoa, dude, what the hell? Now, yeah. you weren't the one who decided to do this. That's totally fair. But if you turn up and then say, oh, well, it's not my job. I think, it, you know, it seems justified. You know, it's justified. Here are the reasons why I'm, you know, that's, that's, that's it done. I'm over. I'm leaving. And it's just, it feels very cold. Instead, if you, if you say, okay, hey, hey, guys, sorry, this is, you know, a long running story. It's not about the, you know, like if you humble yourself more to the audience, if you uh, try and, you know, give a more empathetic approach. You know, if you just say, oh, he deserved it, that's cold and callous. Where if you say, you know, I need to catch up with the situation as well, guys, please give me a moment. I'm trying to work with you. Don't yeah. worry. Th- yeah, this isn't yeah. attacking you. If you are trying to, you know, you punch somebody in the face and left them a black eye, and it's like, don't worry, guys, this this isn't actually, we, we suddenly haven't become psychopaths. <laughs> uh, hands off. Sorry. Um, this is, um, uh, this is, um, things we we might have gone a step too far let me figure things out you know just if that, you ask yeah. for time etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, be more conciliatory with everybody be more mature etc cetera, well, et cetera. that's you bring up a good point though keanu carmony did a what an eight hour stream not very mature you know basically i like the guy i like yep. the streamer he's actually pretty cool but going on an eight hour rant is not very like mature basically the the obvious thing would have been like you know hey you know yeah i mean some things we're working it out and always during drama you always have like the first you know 10 minutes of you blowing up going crazy and all that kind of stuff and then you know based another couple hours of like you type into like ah jam death you know you know, doing that kind of thing um i, I think um, you, um if you, we want to get into the broader story on this yeah like, let's get a broader story both, yeah go ahead yeah. both sides are yeah. rather immature from my both sides were wrong to tell you the truth in my own I opinion would, i would have one thing before that just to uh finish off with what mm-hmm. actually happened um because one thing that also happened is pgi closed down the forum thread for the death hunt because people were um spamming uh the code economy topic which wasn't relevant for the death hunt mm. So and, to speak, I mean, it does feel relevant with the whole, oh, you're yeah. ruining the fun. That's, yeah. you know, and but that's the whole to... reason you shouldn't cite it as a reason. <laughs> Sorry. And again, I'm, I don't, I really don't want to show this particular post, but there were a couple of PGI posts on the phone that uh, kind of touched on the chaotic harmony drama, but in my opinion, in a terrible way. And I am always should have just put out a, clear statement as just discussed by Bob and Bider. And also, um, if Chaotic Harmony is streaming for eight hours, like if you know he's going to be on for the next six hours, just gather your thoughts and maybe hop onto the stream with him and clarify it at the source. Like I'm just really uncertain why Darren has hopped onto NGNG, a streamer that was so... completely irrelevant to that particular moment of drama, rather than go to the source and uh, try mm-hmm. to smooth out things there. Did you catch when Darren talked? Because people did ask that to Darren. Why aren't you going over to chat with Chaotic Harmony? He did give an answer, at least at the time, which is obviously when he's quite flustered. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Well, um, yeah, what was the answer? So he, you know, he talked about how you know that Chaotic Harmony is being very, uh, you know, he's very toxic. He's very immature. He feels like you know that there wouldn't be no point in going over there to talk to him. That there is no talking sense into him. And so, therefore, he's not going to try. Mm. That's mm. the sentiment I got. Um, and I can totally agree. Chaotic Harmony, at least, you know, through the whole course of events, has been, you know, a bit toxic, a bit immature, et cetera, et cetera. But I think, um, again, it's just the whole matter of tone that you left someone with you with a black eye and you're just saying he deserves it. He's going to sit in that corner. I'm not even going to talk to him. I'm not going to try and work things out. I think even if the other party is immature, the mature thing to do is to say, 
I'm going to go over there. I'm going to try to apologize. I'm going to try and work things out because Chaotic Harmony is just fanning the flames for eight hours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he is spinning a narrative whilst PGI haven't actually released any much, much public material. Yep. So he is the one in charge of the narrative and you aren't even trying to work things out with him properly. And yep. just that just looks bad in my view. You you put it into words really well. Um, he, Chaotic Harmony at that point was spinning the narrative. And for us who aren't directly involved, there was no way of really knowing what exactly is going on here. And even now after it's basically blown over, all we have gone on, have to go on are some uh, screenshots that I think we're going to go into. Yeah. Now. Our primary source is still, most things are from Chaotic Harmony. Um, um, yeah. and, and when we're guessing PGI's motives, I'm still having to guess that they haven't really, like, they have made claims about it, but their, their statements and their ideas are all over the place, you know, just about the whole uh, ruining people's time. Oh, it's not about LRMs. It's, uh, it, you know, it, it's a bit of a mess on PGI. Well, the execution, front. you know, like I said, the execution both sides was crappy, you know, basically, you know, Kedak Army for what he was doing. And and then the, the total lack of context with, uh, you know, PGI. I, I mean, it, the whole thing was crappy, you know, the whole thing. And it's just drama, you know, be, you know, drama sucks. Yeah. And, you know, both sides should have stand back and go, let's talk it over you know basically that kind of thing but of course you know pgi can't talk to everybody pgi can't talk to me when i go yeah you you can have like no uavs you know it, they're not going to oh, do that to everybody you yeah, know there, there are some things thing like um pgi uh, like darren says oh um chaotic harmony has been warned multiple times yeah now chaotic Harmony has shared one email from the 14th but it's like who i i don't know what other communications he's received and whether he's hiding it from us or anything like that if you claim there's multiple communications i would like to know you know how many emails you sent etc cetera, etc cetera. because as far as chaotic harmony was spinning it he said i only had one and it was a warning and then i just wanted to play with some friends and they preemptively banned me yeah. which you know blah 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 i'm only hearing one side of the story <laughs> yeah. i can only really take the side that i've heard it's kind of like the media so yeah yeah definitely <laughs> not wrong <laughs> so one of the one of the more i i don't know if i want to recall it reliable because this is again a completely out of context screenshot i don't even know whom this message was sent to uh, but this is a message from uh, darren where he tried to kind of somewhat explain what's been going on and uh Important here, it's not about Lerms, it's not about running groups, it's not about sync dropping, it's not about criticizing McWire online. Like just this particular sentence is something I would have preferred to see yeah. publicly rather yep. than private message. That would that would have solved so much right there. Yeah. Other so much players do all of that regularly and not receiving any consequences. This was also a big part of what uh, uh Harmony was ranting about the whole time. Um he was specifically mentioned the player call me Ash, which if uh, if you're up to Reddit, uh, he clashed with the first circuit and our oh, he did? point of view is many, many times. Oh, okay. And he was running a stream with a, a stomp counter where his specific intent was to stomp games and record how often his group of four managed to basically dictate the game completely on their own. Mm. And again, he wasn't banned, so more confusion there. This is 100% because of toxic behavior and because he has stated multiple times in his streams in front of uh, customer service reps that his intentions are to drive players away from the game to make a point and get PGI's attention. This is something that Harmony Gold has confirmed that this was his intention, but again, it was three weeks ago. And uh, from what I've seen in his recent streams, I obviously didn't watch all of them, I just skimmed through them. Uh, I don't think he has repeated that sentiment lately. So yeah, again, it, timing. Yeah. You, you don't you hide someone three weeks after stuff happened. He's already received the warming. He stopped doing it. And then you just ban him later because you're sour. Yeah. Yeah. You, but you don't anyway, ban at someone least, three weeks after they did something. At least this is the reason. And it's driving away from the whole, oh, learning equals bad, <laughs> which is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why PGI has banned him. He has been warned. He continued. He's receiving consequences. Again, we don't. Know. We know only one side of the story, or basically, we have two sides just saying words. No proof on any side. I did not push for this. What happens when customer service gets involved, which happened from player complaints, which I think was from okay. uh, 
couple of streamers or something like that, from what I understand. Yeah, so again, comes down to both sides being immature. Uh, the narrative Harmony Gold presented was that he was. Did you say Harmony was... Gold? Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> bastard! Oh, no. You, just, oh, you no. said that twice. The first time I didn't notice. I'm like, oh, oh god, I, I was a little confused. <laughs> and then I, like, oh. I, I, I dislike, I dislike chaotic comedy, but I don't dislike him that much. <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> that was not intentional. Okay. <laughs> uh, but okay, back to the narrative. Uh, he was fighting okay. to a narrative that he was reported by a, another streamer called Star Wolf, or I believe more likely his wife, Lady Wolf. Um, I can't put that on the stream. Who lied um, about him doing. Uh, stream sniping to specifically hunt them too. Uh, oh, yeah, because I, I I don't have all the sources on that because they do say there was one time he sort of was sort of going after NGDNG, but I, I it, it's drama. I just get, I get lost yeah. within you know, yeah, and then more... this and then that and then this, and it's all long running over yeah. weeks over time. So the the thing that did happen is uh, he did uh, specifically stream snipe NGNG with the intention of um, ruining the game for Phil from NGNG. Mm -hmm. um, that was once he uh, denied ever stream sniping Star Wolf and Lady Wolf, um, and I believe the uh, Star Wolf made a statement where they reported him because of the harassment of NGNG and not uh, when he went against them. I mean, the whole point is to hunt the streamer, so I don't care if, like, someone uses 12 bands against me. It's like, okay, cool. You no, know, part of the game. It's part of the hunt. Important is this all happened way before the Need Fund event. Like, this is completely just oh, okay. out of out of event drama that happened there. Mm. Yep. Same. So, again, conflicting stories, and this is basically what Star Wolf had to say afterwards, after everything. Mm -hmm. And... It's, I guess maybe get to get somewhere to the end, uh, Chaotic Harmony made a statement in his Discord trying to clear this a little bit more. Um, he agreed that he was reported for good reason. And he, I don't know if he apologized directly to NGNG, but he did say he was sorry about it. Uh, I mean, we were being shitters, okay. Yeah. Glad, he, glad he agrees on that. Yeah, this and, is, you know, afterwards, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's basically saying, I was wrong. Um, shit's blown out of proportion. It's time to dial back. All of our streamers have been shitty to each other. It's time to fix that. So, well, at least he took over. the road, man. You know, basically, that's that's a good that's a good point. You know, basically, took the road. But, of course, every argument, you always blow up and say things you shouldn't say or do things you shouldn't do. And then afterwards, like, why in the hell did I do that? You know, so he's that... A, I mean, yeah. he's had his eight hours in the yeah. spotlight. It's time to be conciliatory, to stay in the game and yeah. stay in the, in the community, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, yeah. Relatively speaking, he is the more coherent of the two parties, at least him and PGI. So <laughs> it makes a sense that he would take that approach. And um, even if he's being more conciliatory in his own Discord, um, there's the tricky thing, though, that still the two sides haven't actually sat down and chatted with one another. Are they going to ban him, you know, ban him preemptively again next time he's going to play with his four friends? Because, you know, it's the same pretense from PGI's perspective. Mm. And is Darren just going to jump on NGNG again? And they're just both going to agree how bad Chaotic Harmony is. And it's just like, oh, God, this is six weeks old and you've done the same routine again. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't. I don't think. Hopefully, at least, you know, this is the one slap. You know, naughty boy, and things will improve in the future. Yeah, like you said, man. Just talk to each other after everything happened. You know, just like you said, Kana Carmody had his eight hours. You know, basically doing that kind of thing. Everyone, you know, everything's fine now. He can still play and do his things and you know stuff like that. Star Wolf, uh, um, unfortunately, is going to take a break. Um, you know, for a while. Like, drama sucks, man. Drama's crappy man having drama is like the worst thing you'd ever have inside being a streamer or a youtuber or anything man because you always got to watch what's going on and keep up to date and it's just it's stupid and uh you try to avoid it at all costs at all costs like eh, i don't care what you think i don't really give a crap you know that type thing so um one analogy I made a bit before yeah. we started the podcast a little, by the way, is, uh, it, and this is regarding at least the feedback that Chaotic Harmony is doing. I think, yeah, we all have opinions on the game, but uh, I, you know, I think we don't really approve much of Chaotic Harmony's methods, even though 
the way I liken yes. it is he's somewhat like a wrestling villain where he goes on stage he's like look at me I and my team of lovers will now destroy the game ha, 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 ha. such a stupid <laughs> game this is look at us trolling defeating all these other people and you know he's just relishing the moment and playing the heel now yeah. He is being toxic. He is calling out PGI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't think it's the appropriate way to do it. But he's also—it's a comic book villain, and in some ways, I'm just like, this is this is so silly. This is pointless drama. Yeah, you know, in the end, both both sides were wrong. In the end, that's it. The end of story. Um, yeah, PGI. I, I would like to say, um, yeah, go ahead. As much as I disagree with his statements and especially his method, like driving player away from Macro Online in hopes that PGI goes bankrupt and someone else creates a better Macro Online, is IMO dumb AF. Uh, mm -hmm. Besides that, I must admire how he played it yesterday. Like he farmed that that uh, exposure he got, and yes. like purely purely from a broadcast standpoint, he did really well. Like he knows his stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, it didn't like someone um, give like, like 60 or 70 subs? Like uh, someone did that probably. or something? He, I, he yeah. probably got um, you know, more more engagement in that stream than he would have gotten just from his regular yeah. MW content. Yeah, true. Far. True. He got he got an average 150 viewers for eight hours, which for Macro Online is really big. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, and I'll my... be honest, I was watching the stream for most of that time, just playing Macro Online, having it on the background. Mm -hmm. And because he wasn't playing himself, I didn't have confusing noises from his stream. And because he was just repeating the same things over and over again, I didn't have to actively listen. I could just do it all. So <laughs> <I> <laughs> yes. If you want some background stream, it's actually a pretty solid stream. <laughs> um, to try and wrap this all up, at least I've written a little sort of my thoughts, to, uh, sort of giving feedback on both parties a little. Okay. Uh, for Chaotic Harmony, whilst marshalling yourself makes for great entertainment, I don't think you prove much to a community that already kind of know PGI pretty well by now. Instead of rallying an already disenfranchised populace to try and shake the PGI blob into doing something com competent, you might see a lot better results if you appeal to those who hold PGI's leash, their publisher, EG7. I think, you know, this This is all just for yeah, publicity. It doesn't actually, I don't think you're going to make PGI move this way. So, yeah, that's my thoughts, at least for Chaotic Harmony. I don't think... Um, all, all you're doing is winning enemies in PGI's court, not friends. Yeah, you're not yeah. winning your perspective, and it's great. It's great. It's great showmanship. You're playing a great heel, but you're not actually getting the change you want. And I wonder if there's better methods. And that's why I'm wondering, like, you know, if if you think it's more endemic to PGI, look towards EG7 and complain there if you really want to make change. And if you have those opinions, I don't think they would even care to tell you the truth. You know, going through if EG7. people, if if you get rally the community to send. Uh, letters constantly, daily, monthly, or whatnot, complaining about how PGI handles the game. Uh, if they keep doing fuck ups like this, then the publisher will take notice. The only risk you run, though, is the publisher might say, "Well, you know what, MW is kind of a failing game. Let's just close it down." <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the hope is, you say, "Oh, look at how all oh, the community management." team handled this or that situation we feel that you know you the publisher need to come in and help pgi learn some compassion for example or something like that that Probably they need a more yeah. even hand uh, if they struggle with game development it's like if you talk to the publisher the publisher will get a better idea of what the ground what, what's happening on the ground more so than what's just being fed to them by pgi that's just that's if you really want to be proactive. There's so many ways. Like obviously, being friends with PGI is probably a much mm -hmm. better way of making them do what you want. Doing you know huge big long spreadsheets and just you know shoving them in their way is probably a lot more effective than you know doing the, all these stunts. But yeah, anyway, that's just my thoughts. That yeah, he's playing a great heel. But uh, this, if he really is passionate about changing the game, I think this is just well creating chaos and mayhem, and it's not much else. Well, hence his name, chaotic. <laughs> So, yes. <laughs> There's not much harmony in this chaos, sadly, other than with his audience. Yeah. Um, but mm. we, uh, for PGI, um, their ability to respond seems rather blunt, and it always is quite blunt. If your ability to cry foul amounts to little more than holding up a piece of paper and shrieking loudly, then at the very least, try and screech at the right time. 
the whole point of the lazy cookie cutter corporate speak about citing terms of service is that it beats around the bush by building an illusion of being technically correct. To maintain that illusion, you need to screech at the right time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and with all those fancy British words you just used, can you make an American version of that speech? Yeah, DJI bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I mean, <laughs> wrestling analogy. Chaotic Army is playing the heel, but you know, why are you making this a wrestling match? And PGI, why are you entering the ring and then just, uh, you know, shooting using them. your greater authority, yeah, yeah, to shoot him? Yeah, that's that's over the top. You don't enter the ring, or you have to you, you shoot him when he and you know, when he breaches your property and you you can cite castle doctrine or whatever yeah. there we go there's an yeah. americanized one there you go <laughs> <laughs> okay. i mean you even used guns in your explanation so should appeal to the american audience hey <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yeah right. um so, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's wrap up basically yeah so that's wrap up of the uh wrap up you guys good anymore all right so uh yeah. to wrap up this episode no, yeah, no. yeah. There, there was some drama uh, <laughs> yeah. hopefully this will be the last of it between those yeah. two they will hopefully reconcile that's all Makeup. in the end you know uh, it, it should hopefully be put all behind us and yeah. you know we yeah, should definitely. look to the roadmap and look to the future because you know all those changes that chaotic army is harping about is on the roadmap hopefully those will be implemented properly we're getting new mechs we're getting new variants um the game will be mixed up a bit and yeah it, in the end hopefully PG, you know mwo has a bright future and part of that is yep we'll just keep playing the the games you know, for the events for the sales and let's have a good time yeah drama's crappy don't do it and uh, let's just go ahead and uh, have some fun in back quarter online so anything like you no? You okay. said it perfectly. Yeah, enjoy so, the game. Yeah, enjoy it's the game, man. Fun. Have fun with it, man. That's and that's about it. So let's uh, that's a wrap up of episode one thirty seven of the First Circuit Podcast. Thank you for being here. Uh, tonight's hosts are Ian. Bye, Biter. I still want to be a guest. Uh, okay, and guest <laughs> old Bob. Thank you very much. <laughs> let's see you guys later, and stay safe, everybody.